Uh, so our paper is about the price discovery of index futures across markets. So it's an old question. There's been there's been uh, heavily researched by by Hushbrook and their whole microstructure literature in the U.S. that that looks at uh, price discovery across two different markets: a satellite market and the main exchange. For example, the New York Stock Exchange and all other satellite markets, and they look at common stocks and equity that is being traded, and they look at where actually price discovery occurs. In other words, uh, it's like where prices actually move, the efficient price, where it actually moves first, and the other satellite markets are chasing after it. So why is this important? Is 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 where information actually starts, and uh, Hushbrook and and his uh, co-authors has produced and information share measure that is able to describe it. But their usual the base paradigm is firstly domestic uh, domestic exchanges, number one, is tends to discover price more efficiently. And uh, the bigger exchanges tends to discover price more efficiently and it's constant through time. So you won't see that some uh, satellite exchange, Cincinnati exchange for example, has some particular stocks that is there is a discovering price as compared to New York Stock Exchange. Uh, then, in this paper, we try to look at it at a different angle, and uh, we look at two different exchanges across across the globe. For example, uh, National Stock Exchange and SGX is two different places. But SGX has a has a well known uh, business model of taking copycats, copycat index across across the globe, and successfully make money from it. So a very good example is the Nikkei 225. So Nikkei 225 index has already been existed since the 19s, 1980s. However, the, the, Tokyo Stock Exchange, the, the Osaka Stock Exchange do not produce futures index that you can trade on it. So you have an index, but you cannot trade on the index. So you can only buy common stocks from it. And SGX is the first to actually introduce a futures on the Nikkei 225 index. And it becomes very popular, and they and the transaction, the volume and transaction is humorous and humongous, and they make a lot of money from it. And thereafter, Osaka Stock Exchange saw the opportunity and uh, introduced their own future index. And similarly for the uh, National Stock Exchange, they too and SGX introduced the Nifty, which is exactly the same underlying with a little bit of twist. They have. Uh, one is in the, the, the one introduced by NSE is, 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 uh, is calculated in terms of rupees, whereas the one introduced by SGX in, is calculated by in, in USD. However, the interesting thing is, why would traders trade at SGX? And they're actually making a lot of money from it, from the volume. Why are they doing it? And we will give a few uh, anecdotal uh, evidence of why does this happen. So a background is that, uh, Integration and globalization among exchanges is uh, is it's been it's, it's been a while for for many years, and you know that securities trades in different exchanges across the globe for many reasons. And one of them is they want to get access to capital from different uh, from the other part of the world. Uh, take for example, Thomson Reuters or and even the Sanopex from uh, from China stock. And uh, SGX is well known for introducing indexes futures that is that is across the globe. Uh, the Nifty Index, you all, may, you all, you all should know it. Uh, Nikkei 225 Index, which is the Japanese index. The uh, Financial Times Stock Exchange, uh, A50 China Index uh, futures, which is getting popular for the last few years. Because the, actually, uh, this is where traders can actually trade and speculate in the Chinese market offshore. And it's, and it's one of the, the popular ones. And uh, the MSCI Taiwan Index. And each of them has their own counterpart uh, in their own domestic exchange. So the economic question is now, one index, two market, why would the foreign market actually survive? You know? And SGX is one popular example that you actually strive from it. So uh, not all index has the same underlying, but luckily for us, the, the, nifty, the nifty index futures and the uh, the one that is being sold in the NSE has the same underlying together with the Nikkei 225. And uh, they have different market structure, so regulation are different, uh, liquidity, but for futures, as we know, it's, it's actually quite liquid. Uh, there may be uh, 
barrier for trading and there may be different purpose like hedging purpose. So does a Singapore company want to hedge their risk of a, from, from India, their, their business model, they may want to do it at SGX and they may not want to do it. But how, for, but how does this process, the, the, the agents that are doing trading, affects the, the, the information? You know? So if India is an open economy and uh, a, a Singapore trader does want to hedge his risk, why don't he just do it at the National Stock Exchange? If the prices and the National Stock Exchange is more revealing, is faster, I do not want to trade. Uh, for some reason, I, I think whether traders want to trade at the lagged market or the lead market is still debatable, but I think it, as a whole, uh, most traders will want to trade at the lead market. And exchanges tends to use this uh, as, a, as a form of advertisement, like my index is the leading index. So traders will want, and that's where they get their income from. Uh, and one of our main, uh, our main paper is trying to convince all of you that uh, there is a possibility that price discovery actually could occur at a foreign, foreign exchange. And how efficient is the price discovery? And our main measure will be the Hashbrock 1995 uh, and, its in, and, and its variant uh, information discovery, information share measure. So we will look. So this is the information share measure. One is being uh, all the information uh, is discovered 100%. So uh, we have an efficient price that we cannot observe. All we observe is the bid and ask price and the trader price. And we, we, we estimate the information share from two markets. So see which market uh, is closer to the efficient price by, by the measurement of variance. And the, the, the ratio of the variance that explain the efficient price the more the variance that you explain, and, and therefore, this is where the information is, is being uh, accumulated or is being uh, occurred at a particular. So for this, uh, we, this is a graph of a Nifty uh, index futures that is being traded at both exchanges, SGX and SE. And the information share, if it's one, it means the, the information occurs at SGX. Okay? And if it's zero, it means that the information occurs at NSE. And as you can see, it's time varying. It is not a constant 95%, uh, 0.95, which is what Hashbrook document for, for, for the equity at uh, the NYSC case with the other satellite exchange. For the case of the SGX and NSC, we can see that uh, from this is a long series, about, five, about four and a half years, from 2001 to the 2015. And we can see that there are periods in which uh, information is being discovered quickly at, N at, at NC. And uh, the recently, information has been discovered at, uh, at uh, SGX. And uh, if this doesn't convince you, we will, we will convince you further <laughs> using another method. So before that, okay, uh, we, 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 let me just do an explain and uh, try to sell some of why SGX. Okay, so SGX is Asia's largest offshore futures market. They, in my opinion, they have not been doing well in their common equity, but surprisingly, they have been doing well with selling uh, uh, off, offshore futures uh, derivatives. And uh, they offer Asia's broadest range of derivatives covering over 80% of Asia's economies. Okay? Uh, the total value traded in 2013 is humongous for different countries. Okay, so... Uh, a bit of some technicalities. So if we just need to zoom in at the, the, the yellow box for, for the trading hours. Yeah, so SGX is also well known for being hardworking. Whichever market that is being traded and they copycat. So I trade at the same time, okay, but longer. So if you start at, so for NSE, they start trading the Nifty at 9.15, uh, then I will open my market at 6.30 in the morning. Okay, and then when the market closes at, at, at 3.30, I will close my market at 3.40. So this is the same for all other markets. Uh, the, the, the Nikkei 225, they have a longer trading hour. Uh, for the, the Taiwan exchange, they also have a longer trading hour. And even for the Chinese market, the Chinese market has lunch hours, but SGX, we don't take lunch. You know? They trade throughout. Okay? So, uh,
Just now I show you the long, the long time series for, for, for Nifty, okay? But for our purpose of the paper, we constrict into this uh, six, seven month period and it's a tick by tick data from Bloomberg. The interesting things about this, of getting data is that you get data from two exchange. So National Stock Exchange, SGX. Like now if I know some, someone from, S, from, from National Stock Exchange, then if I can get the data, then I know someone from SGX, then it's good, okay? So if I want to get the data from uh, Nikkei 205, I think I have to, to know a Japanese <laughs> to get the data. So what is available to me is only in, in Bloomberg at this current period, and it's a, I think it's a good start-off point. So it's a one, it's a one second time interval. Uh, why one second, I'll explain later. And then uh, we take the latest price for in, in, in every second period uh, as, as our price point, and we look at our so we have the transaction price, the bid price, and ask price, and we will remove, and we will not look at periods in which uh, when one market is open and one market is closed. So we look at the period in which the prices from both markets are actively traded at the same time. Yeah. So as you can see, this is uh, one example for the Nikkei price price futures of uh, July July 8, 8 of July 2014. They are quite co-integrated, you know. But if you look, if you look in details, if you look at it under the microscope, you can see there are many differences, and possibly one market can be leading or lagging at another market. If you look at a five five minutes time interval, you may see it may seem that both horses are moving parallel in time. But how about if you zoom in down from one minute interval, one second interval? Can we see a difference? Okay. So uh, a lot of this discussion has been like. Okay, SGX, uh, people trade at SGX because of transaction costs, uh, because SGX has lesser taxes, and so on and so forth. But if you look at uh, the Nifty Index, for example, do you know that it's actually a lot much cheaper to trade at the NSC? Uh, the minimum, cheaper in the sense that uh, you can get the minimum lot at a cheaper price. At SGX, because it's USD, it's US dollar per trade, you can actually get five lots in, N in NSC, okay? And it's so much more expensive to trade <coughs> in the Chinese exchange, the, the CFFE, which is about 15 times. So the minimum lot that they can actually purchase, you require a, a is, is indirectly, your margin has to be larger either for your, for if you trade in the futures. And uh, for Nikkei 205, this is where the, the <coughs> The literature has focused on in, in many years. It's cheaper to trade at SGX. It's about half half the cost, and it's also cheaper to trade in in SGX for the Taiwan uh, index futures. Yeah. So uh, a brief a brief touch on for for those econometricians out there. Uh, we follow the Hashman 985. We lead with a little variance that we take in the Lien and uh, uh, Stress Tra in 2009. They take into <coughs> account the uh, the the stacking order of uh, which which which, uh, which prices do we take account? First, uh, we assume that price is uh, I1, and then they are co-integrated, and we assume that co-integration is one is to one, so we do not need to estimate. But on the side note, if we do estimate them, they are actually near, uh, close to one, and we assume that their co-integration are stationary. And uh, thereafter, uh, we estimate the information share. So the information share looks at the total variance from the efficient price that the unobservable efficient price that, uh, that we estimated, and how much of the variance that has been contributed from one market over the other. And we take the, the, the ratio. Okay, so the larger the variance, the more information one market is actually uh, contributing. So uh, if you look at the average, okay, uh, the, the Nifty being traded at the SGX contribute about 63% of the total information as compared to the one at contributing at NSE. So this may be one reason why trade, traders actually want to trade SGX. The price seems to be more efficient. And uh, if for, for, the, for the Chinese index, 79% uh, is, is being more, the, the, the price discovery actually occurs at the, the Chinese index. And 62% for, for the Nifty 2 to 5 occurs at the uh, Singapore exchange whereas for the Taiwan index is 75%. So there are some variation. And this we try to explain, and 
and uh, in our next table, we try to look at microstructure kind of uh, explanation. For example, transaction cost, the, the variance of the price, the, the volatility of the price, things that may hinder the traders and uh, the liquidity, things that, I, we, that we think that will hinder the, and uh, that allows the trader to think that, okay, we should trade at one particular exchange over another. And we, we label this as, what we, we, we try to find what are the determinants of the information share, and then we, we see that the spread, so this is the transaction cost, the, it's, it's negatively related to the information share. The greater the spread, the less information that you will get. Uh, the volatility, the greater your volatility, uh, the, the information share will be lower, and then uh, we do not get for the debt, there's no result for the, the, for the volume ratio, and uh, we have uh, we, the result for the order imbalance is positive related. So if you have higher buying pressure, then you will have, uh, the, the, you have greater information share from that. Okay, so this is more a crude method to show that actually uh, one of the, uh, the prices actually do differ. So we look at the one second, one second interval, and we estimate the information share. Okay, and then we previously we have shown that the information share, look at the, the, the first column, that is actually sticky. Okay, there's time variation, but it's sticky. So by doing this, by using this information, we actually uh, look at one day before, what, where, where does actually price discovery occur? And using this information, like if price discovery actually occurs at NSE, okay, the next day I'm going to the NSE exchange and I'm going to trade Nifty, and I'm going, whenever, uh, whenever I look at the futures price at NSE, the, in the next period, I'm going to trade at SGX. Okay, if it's, if it's higher, if, it's, if, it, if it increases, I'm going to long at SGX. If it decreases next period, I'm going to try SGX. And this shows some form of like microstructure way of a, a horse race. One horse is actually running behind another one. So if this is actually true, on average, I should get some profits. Whether these profits is, uh, is actually doable in practice, that's another question. But one thing that this paper wants to show is that actually one market is actually leading the other market. And we actually show this. So we construct this portfolio and our total number, of, uh, our average daily profits is actually positive whenever we use this, this, this method. So this actually shows that yes, there is uh, one market actually has more information and one market is actually leading over the other market in this period of time. Yeah. And this, is, uh, this can be one of the evidence why actually SGX still exists and is still <laughs> relevant in our, day, our society. So in conclusion, uh, price discovery happened in our time period uh, in the domestic market for, for Taiwan and China and in a foreign market for Nifty and SGX. Okay. And information share is sticky and uh, is smaller spread, lower volatility, higher order imbalance contributes to information share in a microstructure sense. And we show some form of profitability when trading on the lab market when the lead market has more information. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Nelson. That was a very good presentation. Uh, so uh, I will not uh, summarize it again, but I'll straight away come to the results that you describe here. So primarily what you are seeing is that uh, whichever market has a, ha a higher market share, that is the market that which is discovering price. This is true of all the three indices except Nifty. Yeah, that's what we are finding. So for uh, for uh, Nikkei, which has 50%, like SGX has 50% market share in total uh, futures trading. There you are seeing that Nikkei has a uh, sorry, SGX has a higher price discovery. And uh, for Chi uh, FTSE China index, you are seeing that. Uh, the higher price discovery is on the domestic market relative to SGCX, uh, SGX and similarly for the Taiwan index. What is actually counterintuitive is the Nifty index where we are seeing that even though it's only 10% of total trading volumes are traded on SGX, we are still seeing a higher price discovery on SGX and this really comes to me as a surprise. And after seeing that, I started looking at liquidity as well, which you have reported in the uh, results table there. Also, we are seeing that liquidity costs are higher on SGX 
and lower on nifty so it, it, it uh, it's becomes very difficult uh, to you know align these two why are we seeing higher uh, higher price discovery on sgx vis-a-vis -vis, uh, nsc and my my first suggestion on this will be that uh, you look for time asynchronicity so you, you are taking data from bloomberg just ensure that bloomberg is giving you the exact time stamp for the two markets and there is no difference just check with that check, just check that the second could be like in terms of margins right so we know that on nsc we have about eight percent margins on uh, uh, that are imposed on nifty index futures what is it about on the sg on sgx so maybe that would be uh, that would help you explain your results if margins are much lower on sgx then you might see even though i think if margins were lower that would show up in uh, terms of higher liquidity on sgx which we are not seeing so there is something certainly that is going wrong when you're comparing nifty uh, reporting nifty results over here so that was on the results part in terms of methodology i have one comment even though like you have incorporated uh, the uh, latest approach by lian and shrishta on uh, taking care of uh, the order uh, ordering issue and in information shared the another thing that i would suggest is to look at the yan and zivot paper which basically say that information share while it is one of the primarily primarily used uh, uh, measure to uh, capture price discovery because it is based on a reduced form model that is vecm uh, you it will be useful to look at the combination of information share and the other typically used measure for price discovery which is component share it is also based on gonzalo granger 1995 approach and they say that if you take the ratio of these two mod, uh, measures then basically what you are seeing in information uh, as the result is the correct um, uh, correct permanent impact of price so that would be useful to report in your paper uh, in terms of regression models my even uh, i think that is uh, uh, that is very much uh, your results are in line with intuition that you are seeing that whichever market has lower spread is the one which will uh, show higher price discovery but it will be useful to report explanatory power of the model that is uh, that is not something that i found in the paper and that's a minor comment that i would suggest uh, so a very interesting uh, part of your paper is the trading strategy and there you see that if you uh, execute uh, this kind of um, trading strategy based on price leadership on an average a, pro a trader will make a higher profit so that's i think that's a very important uh, interesting finding of this paper and in addition to that i would also say that maybe you can look at arbitrage opportunities further right so maybe look at the deviation between say SG, SGX nifty and uh, nsc nifty and see for how long these deviations persist and how much time does it take for these deviations to come back to the mean level yeah so these were the four prime uh, uh, points that i had as a part of my discussion thank you okay so on in in terms of the time trading synchronicity in um, bloomberg yeah so if which i there's a graph that I show for the NSE uh, of Nifty for five years. So that isn't from Bloomberg. It's just uh, from another another research that I took into, and we do compare with the one in Bloomberg, and it's very similar. Uh, the one that I took it, the the one the, the long time series is in from the data data ticks. Uh, is a is a is an ex external data provider that we actually bought, and we and that's the reason we see our time varying information share through time, which is something that is interesting. So. Uh, what what about that is that is it, this time varying is uh, in, is in five years and I personally do not think that is something that got to do with uh, margins requirement taxes because these things don't change uh, so quickly so there must be something like so there must be something like a uh, uh, information that foreigners know as compared to domestic during periods of time. And, but there are other periods of time in which domestic information does actually propagate in the domestic uh, exchange quickly. Maybe macro variables, uh, maybe uh, the, the uh, I, I, I don't know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so on the part on the, uh, so this explains the, 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 the margin question. Uh, on, on other measures of information share, uh, I'm just using it as one measure to show that there is actually uh, uh, differences that uh, one market is actually quicker than the other market and the portfolio is, a, is, a, is another way of showing it that I think people actually uh, believe it better and uh, VCM models actually uh, you can you can v, VCM actually quite it, it is quite generalized you can actually uh, write a, 
a, a non-generalized uh, lead and lag model under VCM structure. And then you can cover it with VCM and then you will get the same thing. So Basically, the paper I'm talking about, it, yes. it uses structural VCM model Correct. and that is uh, what you can exploit in your paper. Yes, sure. Yeah. No problem. Uh, I'll definitely include it. Yeah, and uh, how long does it persist? I've done that and uh, when, when you look at uh, five minutes interval, which some of the older papers does, you can actually see that both, uh, both the information share converge to 0 0.5. And uh, the older papers, when they, when they look at two markets, I think for Nikkei uh, 225 uh, from Singapore and SGX and US, and then you can see that it's actually distributed among SGX and uh, Nikkei at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. But the thing is, if you look deeper, at one minute and or one second interval, you can actually see the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I have. Yeah. Sure. Shall I? Okay. I have a couple of uh, comments and questions, both to the author and to Nithi. Um, so first, some anecdotes. Uh, on the eighth of November, there was a very big event in India, and I've been very curious about the stock price response uh, to this event. So. I find myself awake every day early in the morning with this great longing that there is no market, there is no stock market. You know, it, your life feels empty if you can't see a Nifty. So I end up going to the SGX website and looking at the Nifty futures there. So this is pure anecdote, this is not statistics. But in these days, what SGX Nifty was showing in the early morning before the Nifty shows has not been a useful predictor. Okay, and I think that's an interesting angle you can just look at. That this is the easiest thing, right? This is shooting fish in a barrel. That NSE opens at 9 o'clock. Is the 845 SGX Nifty a good predictor of the 915 Indian Nifty? And my fear is no. That the information set is here. Indian macro is here. Indian firm speculation is here. Okay, this is purely anecdotal. But I was just struck by how day after day I would wake up in the early morning, I would watch the SGX, watch the SGX. But when the Indian market opened, it would just blow up in a different direction and the SGX would tamely follow. Whatever happens in India in the morning, the SGX will follow that. It, has, it cannot go anywhere away from it. So that is just a bunch of anecdotes. From 8th onwards, I have been looking at both markets. My second is a bunch of technical questions. Uh, I, like Nidhi, I am very concerned about clocks. It is non-trivial to get these clocks right. So the questions you have to ask are A. Does SGX sync their time by the NTP, the network time protocol? Okay, we happen to know that in India. NSE syncs by the NTP, BSE syncs by the NTP. Why? Because the regulator has instructed both to sync to NTP to make sure that their clocks are comparable in the event of an investigation. So, it's a question of fact. Could you please check that does SGX sync every trading clock to millisecond accuracy to atomic clocks using NTP? Okay. If so, the SGX timestamp is trustworthy. If not, it's not. Okay. Question two, what is the timestamp as reported by Bloomberg? Okay. Again, you need to be very clear that is this the time at which the record hits the edge of the Bloomberg network or is this the timestamp as reported by the exchange? So for example, in some of the work that we've done here using the Reuters data, we're very careful to disregard the Reuters claim on the time and take the NSE claim on time because we know NSE is NTP time while we don't know what is the Reuters time, and there's all sorts of latency. So you may well be right, but these are just things that you do have to establish. Because one second is such a terrifying differencing frequency. The slightest clock problems will mess up the results at a 1S resolution. Uh, I was also thinking about your result about a profitable stra trading strategy. I was just looking up the fastest pings between Bombay and Singapore are 100 milliseconds. So really at a 1S resolution, it's a very dangerous thing to exploit. Because you, hypothetically, you put the brain of the computer in Singapore. It's getting instant time, it's getting instant data in Singapore because you're sitting inside the co-location there. But India is 100 milliseconds away. You're trying to coordinate strategies, 200, 300 milliseconds go by. Now a 1S result is very fragile. So I have a question for Nidhi. Nidhi, you've done a, a lot of very high frequency work with information share. If this research design, was pushed up to two seconds or three seconds, would there be an appreciable loss in the ability to understand information share? Because I think this design can really be effective if you just allowed to do three second differencing. You know, by the time you're at three seconds, we would not worry so much. 
one second is just so problematic, both in terms of the clocks, the Bloomberg, and the arbitrage. From all these points of view, for this work, one second is a problematic measure. So, if, if, if hypothetically there was a very clean result, like one of your papers, if you had a NSE spot and futures result at 1S, does the result change a lot by you get to 3S? Because if you get to 3S, then this result, you know, would have far less difficulty in going through. You would still need to go through all the steps, but nobody would worry that there's some subtle clock synchronization problem that is messing with your result. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, so our, so for the clocks, uh, we we have an additional data provider that is a uh, private, so it is a uh, thick data. So they they provide up to a quarter of a second. So we we use that as as, as a gauge to look at our one second interval. But the thing is, uh, this this evidence actually is persistence if we look at five seconds, ten seconds, and all this. Okay, and if we look at the profitability of the, the portfolio, I did not take into account the transaction cost. So if you take into account transaction cost, the profits may go away. But the main idea is that uh, prices are actually moving first. So whether you can profit from this, that, I, I think that's another question. Yeah. So if you look at the one second, five second interval, you, you still can see this lead and lag relationship. And this, I think, may be mo this can be enough to to motivate traders to like oh, okay sgx prices are more efficient and i will trade because nsc is, is lagging behind or the other way around nsc has uh its prices to be more efficient and i will trade nsc i think th this is enough we but whether is, is there any arbitrary information uh tra trading profitability i don't think this paper is uh, is, is a focus on that and uh, your points are, are definitely well taken yeah So, uh, so I have a, a sort of a, you know, so we've been looking at just volume data across SGX and NSE Nifty for a bit now. And what we find is that uh, while the domestic market leads on traded volume, SGX leads on open interest. So open interest is double at SGX on the Nifty futures. Um, uh, on the point you made about changes in margin structure, taxes, etc., I think it's not a given that they don't change over time. In India, actually, they do change pretty frequently. I mean, frequently enough to make a difference to to this uh, analysis. The other thing is, because we look, look at this data, what I find is that despite the fact that uh, uh, there's significant trading happening on SGX, uh, when we compute impact costs, we find that we get lower impact costs for the same size of trade in India, even on the future. So again, something to look at. So, um, and what Ajay says is right is, uh, most traders in India look at when SGX, what, what SGX Nifty is closing at to predict what's going to happen on uh, NSE Nifty. Um, but again, it's not always that they find the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will look into more other measures of uh, volume and open interest. And uh, what what she says is actually true because we actually see uh, there are, there are actually times in which NSC actually can see them. There are actually more times in which NSC. But then there is uh, there is actually discovering price. I uh, I suspect for the eight November case, NSC should also discover price <laughs> more efficiently. But the question is now, why is there a role SGX actually can play? Shouldn't be it always be at NSC? No, I mean that. Yeah. I think that has a completely different answer to the one that you are posing. So price discovery yeah. is a different question from why is there in trading on Nifty on SGX. I think there are a lot of answers which uh, some of us who have tracked it already mm -hmm. know. So that's a different answer. I'm not sure that leads up to your question. There's a role for SGX Nifty futures. There's yeah, no and uh, sorry if I can uh, say. So one is that... Uh, uh, you cannot, it's not that prices are efficient unless trades, if there are traders, prices will be, uh, there will not, not be any efficiency, right? It's, if SGX is leading to price efficiency, there must be huge liquidity. And our problem is that we are not seeing high liquidity on SGX for nifty futures. And therefore, it becomes very difficult to align what you find in terms of price discovery on NG, uh, SGX versus how the liquidity behaves. So that's one. And I really like Ajay's suggestion that maybe you can look at uh, 
uh, whether uh, the opening uh, opening prices of nifty futures are determined by uh, by um, sgx like if you compare 845 price at sgx and if there is any predictive uh, predictability of nifty futures price that will be uh, that will be a good idea in addition to that maybe you can just look at the intraday variation in information share and that is what susan and i have done in our own paper like we compare single stock futures and spot and we see that uh, if you just look at the opening hour say the first half an hour of trading we see higher uh, information share across the board for all uh, on the single stock futures market so if you do a similar study for say sgx and nifty where you know that sgx opens before and if there is price predictability then it will also show up in that first half an hour of trading so my my hypothesis is that you will see a higher share of sgx mm -hmm. in the first half an hour of trading versus the remaining day so that's one and to uh, ajay i would say that uh, uh, to your question on one second versus five so we have done this analysis on whether there are uh, if we uh, if you if we go from one second to five second do we see these opportunities yes by five seconds all uh, arbitrage opportunities are over especially for uh, uh, for an index like uh, nifty yeah. it 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 changes so it becomes equal so it uh, becomes 50% 50% yes yes exactly yeah, they converts to 0.5 okay. yeah so it becomes useless so uh, your your comment i've done an I've I've done it in another paper that we looked at the closing and opening of uh, many exchanges, and actually the results is uh, you don't get predictive power. You, yeah, so so that's the reason why we look at uh, we we try to find and then we look at periods in which both markets trade at the same time. Um, so the, what we focus on, though, is information discovery. I mean, the reason why the opening on the futures market, and in our study, it's futures versus spot, because that's what we were. The opening on the futures market captures information that happened overnight. We also look at other periods during the entire, uh, uh, entire uh, study analysis period, where we know that there was more information, like a company announcing results. Right, and ask where is the price discovery higher, and we find that the futures market always leads in price discovery in these information-rich periods. And I guess that's the question that we're asking, that if I really know that there is information happening, which market do I look at, SGX or Nifty? Um, but uh, we'll go to the next uh, comment, which is Ravi. Yeah, just uh, wanted to understand, have you taken into consideration uh, FX convertibility? Because uh, like in Taiwan and Japan, uh, the currency is more convertible than in India, especially in the yen. So the domestic players can also participate in SGX, where here um, you need special accounts to do that. Uh, so that's one I wanted to understand, although FIIs can play in both markets. Uh, second is uh, post market, you know, you can trade SGX till about 11 p.m. India Standard Times. And I think that to me, you know, is a little bit more useful for SGX to be open because, you know, what is happening in the U.S. markets tend to, uh, you can reflect or, or trade your view, especially if you're an Indian portfolio manager. Uh, and where it opens the next morning because the liquidity is thin in Asia, et cetera, I think it, it's more meaning, less meaningful uh, from a portfolio manager's perspective. Josh? I, 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 I found this really interesting stuff. Just, just one small comment on your econometrics. Uh, I, I, I just don't, I mean, this is a genuine question. I just, I just don't grasp uh, regressing information share on the bid ask spread because the bid ask spread is endogenous. I mean, if if all the information is say generated in Singapore, you're going to have very narrow bid ask, ask spread there. Uh, so, so we are looking at a bid ask spread ratio between uh, the the foreign. So everything over there on the on the on the right hand side is the other ratio. It's a comparison between the two markets. Because information share is also a ratio between the two. Yes. Uh, so we 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 try with a lag of one day. So th that that regression is a uh, is 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 contemporaneous. So we also try with a lag one day, but the explanatory power is much lower. Yeah. But we still do get some significance. So it's a it's one day t to t plus one. So it's a. Uh, with another market, like uh, one of my responsibilities was to look at 
NDF market. Yeah, uh, to look at NDF market and uh, just to see how the currency is opening in India. Uh, over the long term, we didn't find any kind of unidirectional or bidirectional causality from uh, Singapore NDF market to Indian market opening mid court or closing. This is just to share exchange rate market the observation is like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that so definitely for foreign exchange, we have to look into it. Uh, it actually may play a, a major role because uh, for 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 the Singapore exchange, we trade in USD, and for the Nifty, they trade in rupees. But uh, I think for the portfolio, we have tried to to uh, take into account. So we have the intraday data for foreign exchange. So if you create a portfolio for every one dollar, if I take into account that if I convert. Uh, instantaneously in the in the foreign exchange, do we actually get this uh, similar uh, profitability? And yes, we still do get because I think the variation in the foreign exchange is not as much as the as, as the profit they can get from leading and lagging. But uh, this may not be implementable. <laughs> yeah. So, like what I I I, I, would, I would like to repeat is that we actually want to show that actually one market the prices move first than the other market. Have you taken the FX movements? For example, if I if I have a rupee portfolio, but I'm actually a dollar fund, and if I want to hedge Nifty against it, and if I hedge in SGX, then I'm also short dollars. So I do two things at once. Yes. So yeah, I will look into it. Yeah. I want to continue where Anjali left off. That I feel we should be careful to not mix up two questions that are quite distinct. One question is why does SGX exist and succeed? What is the raison d'etre for the continued extent of open interest or turnover at SGX? Another question is, does SGX have significant information share? In my mind, the two can be completely decoupled. So it is quite possible that there is a main speculative market in India and there is a very flourishing SGX market because they appeal to different kinds of users. The importance of information share is for the speculator. There is a class of person who wants to sit at the edge of the seat on a trading screen, fire orders, and he cares deeply about another market that is half second ahead. And then there are very large users of markets who are largely non-speculative, who are institutional investors, who are hedgers, who take positions that are unimaginably large compared with the little, you know, few hundred thousand dollars up and down, which is the drama of every second. So I personally feel we should be careful to not mix up the two. So for example, as Saurabh said, I think that the main price discovery of the rupee dollar is here in India, but more than half of the activity of the rupee dollar is overseas. These are consistent statements. The speculation of rupee dollar is here. The information of the rupee dollar is here, but the users are outside. The open interest is outside. The financial services revenues are outside and so on. So I feel we should be careful to distinguish between these two issues. That one issue is why does SGX have sustained market share in the financial intermediation market. This takes you to problems like taxation, capital controls, time of day, you know, many financial regulations and so on. And another issue is, has SGX graduated to the level where it is actually a player in price discovery? Which may be true. Your results may well be correct. I'm not saying they're wrong. But I'm saying that's a different question. It's, it would be a huge achievement for SGX if they actually have information share they're actually the speculative venue where blow by blow the press conference of Amit Shah in Delhi is being traded on SGX and not traded on NSE. It would be a huge achievement if that's the case. But I just feel we should be careful to not mix up these two issues. Yeah, I totally, I, I, I totally agree. So the thing is, uh, there, there, there are some traders that actually, uh, so if, if the information share is as at SGX and if you are speculators, you will want to trade at the lag market, not at the lead market. So it does uh, have uh, certain traders does uh, will want to trade. Uh, however, I think for for futures, there there are more hedging purposes rather than spec speculative. And the, the people that actually do business and they actually want to, in my opinion, they want to trade at the lead market because this is where actually pr they, these are real prices. So uh, there. There are some uh, overlapping points, and I, and I do agree that uh, uh, we, we will definitely think, think, think more into it. Yeah, thank you.
Sorry, I mean, just on that last point, uh, I want to say that this OI to TV ratio actually seems, seems to suggest to me that the Singapore market is a more speculative, I mean, where, uh, I'm not sure whether, um, so I, also from what we hear from participants, I'm not sure whether it's a hedge. Correct, but it's weird if uh, the information share is happening in Singapore and you get speculators speculating in Singapore, <laughs> right? Yeah. So maybe I get the last question. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, suppose, you know, indeed it is true that the price discovery happens at SGX for Nifty. You know, of course, we'll have to really have, you know, more evidence on that. Uh, it will be very interesting to know why it happens because then uh, it is it's extremely significant because a uh, market with lower liquidity can determine price is, is uh, you know, so that will be true for every market and why only here. So, you know, do you have any insights into why it will happen like this? I think that is the most important question. <laughs> so, uh, our, our stand is we, we, we think it is information and uh, maybe global information or information that is not, that is, uh, that is outside of India, that will affect India. So this is one main possibility, but however we are unable That's a very low probability because, you know, information about India cannot be in Singapore. It yeah. will be in India. Proximity so is extremely important. The, the thing is that we are looking at index futures. So they are actually, one volume is much higher than this. Yes, I agree. But they're actually, both markets are actually quite liquid. It's not both market. yeah, they are, there are differences, but both markets are actually liquid. Uh, so in terms of liquidity, I don't think that is the major concern. Uh, and maybe macro information, I don't know. I, this, this is, these are things that we, we, we are really looking into it. Hopefully there's a measure that actually we can determine that is okay. Maybe institutional investors uh, that is at Singapore and then they look at maybe the sea routes that they are affecting Indians company first and the information coming from there and yeah, I don't know. I'm just just guessing. Yeah, yeah. Ongoing research. Yeah, yeah. yeah, ongoing research. Say, say for example, BATS is an exchange. Uh, they try and drive liquidity from other exchanges. So, how they do? How they do do it? And uh, is there any link with that and this? I'll, yeah. I'll bail out Nelson at this yeah. point. I mean, it is open-ended research. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of questions that have come up even amongst our discussion. Uh, no ready answers, but certainly it keeps Nelson in a job for a while, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh,